Adam, yeah. did you? Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. This is what Adam, Allah asked Adam, Tasjud. So you should prostrate, right? Yeah. So he said, Ablis, why hinder thee from falling to prostration before thee, what I created with my both hands? So Allah is asking Ablis, why did you not do the prostration? Okay, to Ablis. Now the problem is that what Egyptian Kafir was showing as well, that yeah. Allah said that do not prostrate to anyone other than himself. Wallahi yasjud. Same word. Minfis samawati wal So, and unto Allah fell to prostration. Whoever is in the heavens and the earth willingly or unwillingly. So everyone, whether they are in the heavens or the earth, do the prostration. Yes, judu to Allah only. Okay. This is Quran chapter number 13, verse number 15. We can also see in Quran chapter number 7, verse number 206, Allah said, Lo, who are with Lord are not too proud to him service, but they praise him and do prostration before him. Yes, Judun. Okay, so what I am showing is that even in Quran, Allah said that do the prostration only to Allah, only to Allah, yet Ablis, which uh, Egyptian Kafir was saying, he was asked to do the sajda to Allah himself, uh, to, to, to Adam. Okay, so is Adam and Allah one? or Adam is Allah, or there is a clear contradiction. Now, when you read about these things, you will realize how circular logic these scholars will give. So that's the whole problem of the problem in Quran, of this sajda and yes to do. Okay, so it's the same word, yeah? Uh, yeah, no, the other word that he was showing is different. So he was showing another reference to it which was yes, Jude and uh, Sajud and Sahud. Well, that's a different thing that he was saying. But I'm showing that even in Sajud, Allah used the word Sajud only for himself as well. So I'm showing mm -hmm. an additional to it. Mm -hmm. In addition to what he was saying, I'm showing you additional two verses, which put Sajud for Allah only as well. Mm -hmm. Yang artinya Yang nah, artinya <laughs> Yang artinya <laughs> Cukup panjang ya <laughs> Udah panjang artinya, itu yang artinya. Uh, Bagaimana Bu Sofia bisa mengartikan Translate-nya <laughs> ya, Maksudnya tadi ada Mas, kata Sebenarnya ada, ada, ada They want me to translate Oh my goodness, I'm sorry Jadi sebenarnya ada dua kata untuk penyembah, tapi uh, uh, there are two words for prostrate, right? Sajud and sajud. So same word, sajda, sajda and sajud, sajud is the act, action, nah? So oh, okay, Sa here, sajud dan sajda, uh, hmm. dua-duanya dipakai uh, kata yang sama. Jadi sebenarnya sujud itu hanya kepada Allah saja kalau di dalam Quran. Makanya di sini yeah. uh, dikatakan suruh sujud kepada Allah menyuruh. Uh, Iblis itu sujud kepada Adam ya ini ya di sini seperti itu. Jadi Adam berkata ini sujud ini sebenarnya uh, selalu dipakai untuk Allah. Kamu nggak boleh sujud kepada yang lain. Nah ini jadi masalah nih di ayat Quran uh, surah 13 ayat 15 ini. Iya. Jadi itu. teman kita Adam Sikir ini mau menunjukkan di mana letak kontradiksinya gitu. Satu uh, satu ayat menunjukkan bahwa manusia tidak uh, jangan menyembah siapapun kecuali Allah gitu ya. Uh, semua makhluk jangan menyembah siapapun kecuali Allah. Tetapi di ayat lain di uh, disuruh malaikat itu menyembah kepada Adam. Ini apakah Adam dan Allah itu satu? Apakah sama Adam dan Allah itu? Gitu. Inilah yang uh, ditunjukkan oleh teman kita bahwa Al-Quran itu tidak logis dan logikanya berputar-putar di situ. Oke, okay. you can continue, Adam. No, I'm, I'm done. Just oh, wanted to show this okay, that Allah is doing. Allah is asking for straight only to Him. You can see the word Ya Sin Jim Dal. Here yeah. you prostrate Ta Sin Jim Dal. So Allah is asking at least why did you not do the sajud, sajad to Adam? Whereas in Quran chapter number thirteen verse number fifteen, Allah is saying 
do only prostration to move me only because or everyone in the heavens and the earth do the prostration to me so even if we take the same word quran still gets into a dilemma <laughs> yeah 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 oke okay, jadi uh, teman kita adam ini mau menunjukkan dua ayat yang kontradiksi ini menambahkan dari yang tadi dijelaskan oleh egyptian kafir ini dia mau menambahkan lagi apa yang uh, ada terjadi perbedaan antara Tuhan memerintahkan agar manusia uh, seluruh makhluk hidup itu menye- menyembah kepada Allah tetapi di ayat yang lain uh, malaikat-malaikat itu disuruh menyembah Adam begitu And by the way uh, Allah asked all the angels to do the prostration Allah never asked the jinn So if Abdul yeah. wasn't doing the prostration Uh, why why was he in trouble because Allah only asked the malaika. Ya, jadi tambahannya adalah di ayat tersebut dijelaskan bahwa Allah itu hanya meminta malaikat untuk menyembah Adam tetapi tidak menyuruh jin untuk menyembah Adam. Jadi kalau misalnya uh, jin tidak mau menyembah kenapa jadi masalah gitu kan? Orang nggak disuruh. That's another problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. I'm eating my breakfast right now. Gimana, Pak Bagus? Iya, yeah. mungkin ini Bu Ana hmm? bisa tanya yeah. ke ke Adam Seeker, gitu. Iya. Yeah. Uh, menurut menurut apa uh, Quran kan bahwa Isa nanti kan datang tidak hanya membunuh Dajjal kan, tapi juga membunuh apa apa uh, babi dan mengatakan salib itu. Coba tanyakan ya. ke Adam Sikel, ya pemahaman uh, Adam Sikel uh, mengenai itu apa esensinya gitu? Iya. Oke. Okay. Uh, Adam, our friend here wants to ask uh, about the understanding in Muslim that in the end days uh, it's it's written that Isa Al Masih will come and kill Dajjal. And then kill pigs and uh, mematahkan apa ya? Broken. Yeah, break the cross yeah. and kill the pigs. And, yeah, and to bro- the uh, break the cross, yeah. And to kill the pigs. Uh, yeah. Do you have uh, any opinion about this? It's a hadith. It's not Quran. It's a hadith. Okay. And it's it's there. Yes. Ya itu adalah tertulis di hadis pak, bukan di Quran kalau penjelasannya. And it's there. And that's that's just silly, right? Uh, yeah. So if why would like first of all, my question to you is why would Isa kill the pig? Forget the cross right now. Why would Isa kill the pig? Tell me that. Ya, jadi sekarang pertanyaannya mengapa Isa membunuh babi-babi? Kenapa coba? Yeah. Itu pertanyaan dari Adam. Oke? Okay? Yeah, is it is it Isn't pig a creation of God as well? Ya, bukankah babi itu juga ciptaan Tuhan? Ya. So then they say, the Muslim scholar says, oh, pig is referred to as the infidels. So he will kill all the infidels. Now the problem is that Muslim also believe that yeah. Isa's message was a message of peace. Oke, okay, jadi... Kalau menurut cendekiawan muslim, ini babi-babi itu diartikan sebagai orang-orang yang tidak taha, taat gitu. Jadi nanti orang-orang tidak taat ini akan dibunuh karena babi itu uh, yang dimaksudkan itu adalah orang yang tidak taat. Tapi juga dituliskan bahwa Isa itu akan datang dan membawa damai. And secondly, why is pig represented as infidel or the kafir or the murtid or whatever? Why? It's just an animal. Ya, jadi kenapa babi itu diibaratkan sebagai orang kafir, sebagai orang yang tidak taat, sebagai orang yang murtad? Kenapa? And that is why when you ask this hadis from a scholar, he will run in circles. Then they will say he will not kill, he will not destroy the cross, the wooden cross, but rather it means that he will destroy all the Christians who think yeah. that he was crucified. Oke, okay, jadi ketika 
uh, kita bertanya tentang hadis ini tentang Isa membunuh babi-babi ini kepada cendekiawan muslim mereka pada akhirnya akan berputar-putar saja jawabannya lalu tentang Isa akan menghancurkan salib itu uh, ada pendapat yang menyebutkan bahwa yang dihancurkan itu dimaksudkan adalah orang-orang Kristen so Isa will come and kill all the Christians whom Allah deceived by creating the shubha shubha lahu that wama salabu wama katalu wama lakin la shubha lahu that they neither killed him nor crucified him but we made it look like that he was and then Allah said I am the best of all makarin I am khallahu khairul makarin so Allah is the one who created all the shubha the deception or the the the, the shubha how do I translate shubha uh, the doubt in the minds of the people that he was crucified yet Allah created all the deception or the plotting in such a way that everyone will see Jesus crucified but he was not crucified yet Isa will come and kill all these people who saw from his own eyes and testified to the people after them and they believe him crucified that's the most insane story ever yeah Jadi ini adalah kalau misalnya orang-orang Kristen itu pada akhirnya akan dihancurkan oleh Isa, ini uh, berarti uh, bahwa orang-orang ini sudah ditipu oleh Allah. Subha tadi itu artinya uh, tipuan sepertinya ya. Jadi ini ada hal yang tidak masuk akal katanya. I spoke a lot and you translated just one line. That was a very. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Jadi dia mengatakan itu a doubt, a doubt itu artinya keraguan. Jadi Allah itu menimbulkan yeah. keraguan di dalam hati mereka. Iya. Yeah, gimana Quran bisa version. ditambahkan, Mbak Sofia? Okay. You can continue, Adam. Yeah, that's a Quran verse. They did not kill him nor crucify him. It is Quran chapter number four, verse number 157. It says they did not kill him. وَقَوْلُهُمْ إِنَّا قَتَلْنَا الْمَسِيحِ إِسَا إِبْنِ مَرْيَمْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَمَا قَتَلُوا وَمَا سَلَبُوا وَلَكِنَّ شُبْحَ لَهُمْ وَإِنَّ الَّذِينَ أَقْتَلُفُوا فِيهِ لَفِي شَكَّنْ مِنْهُ So, am I showing my screen? I'm not showing my screen. Hold yeah, on. belum. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. So, let me just show my screen because then it will be very clear. The pagan god. Allah. Okay. Wrong screen. Uh, this is the verse. Yeah, jadi, Adam ini mau menunjukkan surat di mana... Uh, menyebutkan Isa itu di tidak disalibkan tidak dibunuh. Ini sih Ini sih Quran chapter number 4 verse number 157. Ya, surat An-Nisa verse 157. 157. And because of this saying, we slew the Messiah Jesus son of Mary, Allah's messenger. Okay? Inna qatalna Isa ibn Maryam Rasulullah. They slew him not, nor did they crucify him. Wa ma qatalu wa ma salabu. Okay? But uh, appeared unto them. Walakin la shubha lahum. But we made it appear to them. Made it like like shubha is a kind of a deception, basically. Like you, it is there, but you can't see it there. Ya, jadi kata shubha itu uh, dijelaskan oleh Adam ada di surat Anisa ayat 157. Uh, shubha itu yang artinya uh, diperlihatkan seperti itu. Tetapi juga bisa diartikan uh, subha itu adalah tipuan. And lo, those who disagree concerning it are in doubt. Wa in lalazina akhtalafu fihi into lafi shakka minhu. So they are in doubt about it. Like, they are in doubt about it. So Allah is saying, you are in doubt. I created the shubha. I created the doubt for you. I created the deception for you. I created the shak for you. Ya, jadi uh, di sini disebutkan bahwa orang-orang uh, meragukan ya hal ini. Padahal memang Tuhan itu uh, ditulis bahwa melakukan Tuhan uh, Allah itu melakukan uh, penipuan, melakukan uh, hal ini hal untuk membuat kamu meragu. Ya, yeah, and then and and then Allah Allah waited 600 years. To bring Muhammad to tell them it was a shubha, like this is what Muhammad is telling us. Yeah, jadi Allah itu juga menunggu 
waktu selama 600 tahun untuk memberitahukan hal ini, memberitahukan tentang tipuannya, tentang Isa yang disalibkan. So for 600 years everyone believed what they saw. How can they ignore what they saw? Ya, yeah, jadi bagaimana orang-orang bisa uh, apa ignore, ignore nyuekin ya? Means forget, yeah, ignore or uh, yeah. forget. Iya, yeah, bagaimana selama 600 tahun orang-orang bisa lupa tentang hal ini? Atau Because mengabaikan hal ini? Allah is saying about this, you can read the context of this one. Uh, three, uh, Sorry, 354. And it says, Allah, khairul makarin. They plotted and Allah plotted, or they schemed and Allah schemed, and Allah is the best of schemer. Wallahu alam. Awesome. Yeah. Allah is the best of schemer. Great. Awesome. Chill all the mithe chal. Ya, skimmer apa ya bahasa Indonesianya Kak Sofiatul mungkin bisa kasih tahu penipu ya. Penipu. Ya. Ya, yeah, in Indonesian language you might have planning because that's a very nice word. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's how silly it is. So, yeah, um, I was a Muslim, right? I used to believe in it, uh, but at the same time, the question is twofold. Why would Allah do such a scheme? Okay, and when you go to Muslim scholars, every sect has different answer for this. Ya, jadi pertanyaannya sekarang adalah mengapa Allah melakukan tipuan seperti itu dan ketika di uh, dibalikan lagi ke orang-orang Muslim, tiap aliran dalam Muslim ini punya jawaban yang berbeda-beda. So, uh, one particular sect actually says that Jesus when he was carrying the cross on the way to the cross there was a guy who looked like Jesus Jesus was not able to pick up the cross so the Romans asked that guy to pick up the cross and Jesus ran away from there Oke okay, jadi ada uh, sekte tertentu yang berkata tentang kejadian penyelipan bahwa ketika Yesus disuruh orang Romawi membawa salibnya Terus ada satu orang laki-laki yang disuruh membantu Yesus untuk membawa salib. Uh, orang itulah yang akhirnya disalibkan dan Yesusnya itu malah pergi kabur. And then Allah picked him to himself. The second sect actually says that Jesus was not even beaten by the Romans. Before that time, after the last supper, there was another guy who made to appear like Jesus. So he took all the beating and crossing for Jesus. Ya, jadi ada sekte kedua yang mengatakan bahwa Yesus Kristus itu tidak dipukulin ketika kejadian perjamuan terakhir itu. Uh, ketika itu uh, Yesusnya itu sudah berganti. Jadi ada orang lain yang mengambil posisi Yesus yang dipukulin. Yesusnya tidak. The third and the most latest ones actually says that no Jesus was put on the cross but from the cross Allah picked him to himself jadi uh, jadi the latest latest people uh, modern modern scholars oke okay, uh, jadi ada pendapat berikutnya yang lebih uh, baru ya modern scholars uh, cendikiawan yang modern itu bilang bahwa uh, bukan Yesus yang disalibkan So there are multiple schools of thoughts on this and all of these you can find in different tafsirs. Ya, jadi ada banyak sekali peng, uh, pemahaman yang berbeda tentang hal ini dan bisa dicari dalam tafsir. And then there are another sect of Islam called Quranist. Ya, ada sekte lainnya dalam Islam namanya Quranis. They say that Jesus did die but did not die in the cross. Nah, sekte ini berkata bahwa Yesus Kristus memang mati tapi tidak mati di atas kayu salib. And they use the next two verses. The next verse is bal rafiyalla ilaihi wa kana Allahu azizan hakima and Allah took him to himself and Allah was might and wise. 
Ya, jadi sekte ini mengambil uh, pemahaman dari Anisa ayat 158. Bisa kita baca di layar. And then it says, Wa inna min ahlil kitabil lamuni bihi qabla al-mauta. There is no one of the people of scripture but will believe in him, who him, Jesus, before his death on the day of resurrection and the day of resurrection. Oke, okay, jadi pada ayat 159 di surat Anisa ini ditulis bahwa tidak ada satu orang pun pengikut Alkitab ini akan percaya kepada Yesus sebelum uh, Yesus mati. Makanya ada sekte Quranis ini yang bilang bahwa Yesus itu sudah mati tapi tidak mati di salib. And the other ones which are not pure Quranist, they go with the tafsir and ahadis as well. They say that this verse is referring to the second coming of Jesus and his death after the second coming. Oke, okay, jadi ada juga orang-orang dari sektor lainnya, bukan yang Quranis ini, yang mengambil dari hadis itu bah, uh, ayat yang ke-159 ini menyebutkan tentang kedatangan kedua Yesus. So, yeah, that's the answer in detail. Oke, okay. thank you. Bagaimana Pak Bagus? Lanjut lagi ada pertanyaannya. Ya, mungkin ada ada teman-teman yang mau bertanya silakan. Red Lion. Ya, uh, mau nanya ya. Adam, how long you became a Muslim and uh, how long you became a Christian now? I'm a Christian from the last two years almost. Okay. Are you living in India? No. Come on, man. Oh. Do I sound like uh, Indian? Yeah, <laughs> I thought you. Are. You oh, are my like Indian. That's just so mad. That's just so mean. You are so mean. <laughs> okay, no, I'm from Pakistan. No, oh, okay, I'm okay. from Pakistan. Okay. okay, sorry. Adam and Zagir Naik still got relatively <laughs> close, right? If I speak uh, according to the Zagir Naik, uh, you will not be able to understand uh, a little bit. Uh, even the little bit will not be understand, uh, you know, brother. Uh, I just know Nehi, 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 brother, Nehi. Nahi, nahi means no. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so brother, don't think I'm from India because if I'm from India, <laughs> I'll be speaking like this, brother. <laughs> Hi, uh, Adam. How many person is uh, Christian in uh, Pakistan? Less than two person. Oh, okay. Oh, it, it's small number, yeah, in Pakistan, yeah. And they are very persecuted. Hmm. Uh, they are what? called. They are called in general term. They are called shit. 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 S H I T. Shit. Oh, oh, please. No, that's the reality. They uh, are called. They are called chuda. Chuda is a term uh, that was given to them because when Pakistan was developed and all, they were not given proper jobs, so they had to do the worst jobs. The worst jobs of cleaning the gutters, the main holes, and then at the same time, in those times, in the houses, you did not had a sewerage system. You know the sewerage mm-hmm. system. Yeah. You do not had that system back in those days. So but, but, what happens but, is. But they allow you to build church or. Hold on, I'll go there. So what happens is back in those days there are big buckets. That you do the mm-hmm. shit in, okay, shit and piss in. Mm-hmm. So these Christians were given that job because they needed to earn some money somehow, you know. Otherwise, they they cannot survive, right? So they used to take the shit from the houses, put it in a bigger bucket, and throw it in the main hole or the dumping area. So they are called chuda, the ones who carry the shit on the head, and they are with they are they are there's like shit on on them always. So that's called chuda. So that's the derogatory term that they are. constantly using till now for all the christians now you can translate the whole thing oke okay, jadi uh, muslim uh, pakistan ini mayoritas muslim dan orang kristen di pakistan itu jumlahnya sekitar 2% saja dan uh, orang-orang kristen di pakistan ini kehidupannya uh, dipersekusi juga setiap hari ya dan bahkan mereka tidak bisa mendapat pekerjaan yang layak contohnya mereka itu Pekerjaannya adalah membersihkan kotoran manusia. Jadi di Pakistan sana itu banyak rumah-rumah yang tidak punya kakus atau nggak punya sistem 
pembuangan WC gitu. Jadi orang-orang di rumah itu ketika buang air, mereka buang air pada ember dan nanti itu embernya ini ada orang yang ditugaskan bekerja itu mengambil ember-ember isinya kotoran dan ditaruh mereka bawa ke tempat pembuangan. Nah, orang orang-orang inilah yang disebut jurah dan orang-orang Kristen di sana yang memang tidak bisa mendapat penghidupan layak, mau nggak mau mereka harus bekerja untuk membuang kotoran manusia ini dan itu uh, sebutan jurah itu jadi melekat kepada orang-orang Kristen di sana. Oke, okay, Adam, you can continue. And even till now they have a lower status like out of those two person 90% of the christians are confined in boundary areas which are specifically for christian and they are the worst conditions they are in the worst conditions so the they are called christian community houses so they build the houses there they live there they die there and in the miserable miserable conditions they are Oke, okay. aku tadi keputus suaranya Kak Sofiatul mungkin bisa ngertiin? Hmm, gak terlalu dengerin aku. Can you repeat oh, that again, Adam? So, even now, like mm -hmm. the 90 percent of the Christians out of the two percent total population of Christian, they are confined in the housing area which has walls around it. So that they will stay inside those walls. Hmm, jadi mereka mereka 90% daripada orang-orang Kristen dari 2% populasi tadi kan orang Kristen cuma 2%, 90% dari 2% itu juga kayak terkurung gitu ya. Ada ada vault, vault tuh kayak ada apa ya kayak dipagarin gitu ada ada vaultnya, ada pemisahnya kayak gitu. Dan mereka juga juga terkurung di satu area tertentu. You mean they isolated in a certain area? Like it's so hard for them to get out of their area and live in a normal community because they do not have the money. You know, they were they are like you know you might have seen some areas. Maybe there are certain areas over there where you know the worst houses are there and you can actually live in there for cheap and all. So they they build walls around that so that they'll just stay there. They are like cockroaches of the society. Yeah, yeah. Jadi kayak dibangun benteng, kayak dibangun tembok gitu seliringnya khusus untuk orang-orang Kristen di sana dan susah bagi mereka untuk keluar uh, punya kehidupan yang lebih layak seperti itu. So the rest of the 10 person who actually could study and get out of that thing and could study and could educate and get out of that community, they are persecuted every day, left, right, and center, and even in the offices. There are glass ceilings that you cannot see. The ceiling is there, but there's a glass ceiling that they cannot climb over. Hmm, jadi bahkan 10% dari total komunitas orang Kristen tadi itu yang bisa keluar dari tempat itu ya, dari komunitas mereka punya kehidupan yang lebih layak juga um, di dalam pekerjaan mereka, di dalam kantor juga dipersekusi juga gitu. Jadi semacam ada satu pemisah uh, antara orang-orang Kristen dengan orang-orang non-Kristen di sana. Talk to a Christian in a Muslim country in in Pakistan especially and if they are speaking in court, if they are speaking in a government building, if they are speaking in any office, they actually have to say Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They have to say it, otherwise they will be put into blasphemy case. Hmm, jadi kalau orang-orang Kristen mau kerja di, di Pakistan, kerja di gedung pemerintah atau di kantor-kantor yang lebih layak, mereka harus mengatakan bahwa Muhammad itu adalah utusannya Allah, gitu ya. Kalau enggak, itu nanti mereka akan kena penghujatan atau penodaan agama. Every year, every year, it is there in Dawn News, Nation News, CNN, BBC. I have done a video on that. Every year, at least 400 Christian girls, children, girls under 13, under 14 years, small children girls are forced converted to Islam and married to elder Muslim guys. Every year. Jadi setiap tahun kira-kira ada 400 tuh wanita-wanita muda dan anak-anak uh, perempuan ya Kristen itu dipaksa. Uh, uh, Adam, I mean, I mean, they they forced to be a Muslim or? Yes, 
they are forced because converted they don't have to money Islam. No, because they don't have money, so they force. Because they, they are just beautiful. Money. They are just beautiful children, and these forty years, thirty years, twenty-five years, thirty years, forty years guy has lusted on her, and they will drag her, force her to marry, convert to Islam, and then oh, because she converted to Islam, she cannot go back to her pagan father and parents, and this happens to almost four hundred girls every year. it's a yearly record it's continuously there and this was this 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 record started to building up in year 2012 onwards before that we don't even know how many is there any uh, international community come to afghanistan about this or no what should they do what should they do what can they do most of them <clears throat> their voices are not even reached outside They, they 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 are just inside they are like small towns small area you just know three cities of pakistan lahore karachi islamabad there are like 5000 cities of pakistan you like nobody knows what is happening in there i know it first hand and if somebody raises try to raise the voice they put her into blasphemy case what happened to that uh, uh, bb uh, same thing How how about in the main cities? The same may happen or no? Main cities is less because in the main cities you have more voice, you have news channels, you have everything. In the and the main cities, the problem with the main cities is Christian. So in the in the village, that's me. You mean smaller cities and villages? Because in the main cities, the Christians are only there who are out, who are the ten percent. You know what I mean? Who came out of those bondages of illiterate small. cockroach homes right so who came out of that they are in the main cities so they have some some kind of authority some money to to go to authorities and reach out to the authorities raise the voices so they are a little bit more protected because they they can reach out to authorities but the other ones <clears throat> it's it's altogether very different So totally, how many exactly uh, the the amounts of a million or less than million? Uh, I think it should be more than million because the total population of Pakistan is twenty two crores. How much is that's one crore? That's that's quite a lot. <clears throat> you know what a crore is, right? Yeah. So it's two uh, percent of twenty two crores. So over two million. Mm. So uh, in Pakistan, you're using the uh, Islam rule or this uh, like uh, normal rules, normal so, law. Uh, Pakistan has multiple Sharia's in their law, but not hundred percent. So you can say it's like a forty percent Sharia compliant country, not sixty percent. So it has the blasphemy law, but it does not has the apostate law. But they catch the apostate through the blasphemy law. So now, <clears throat> this is how easy it is. my passport says i am a muslim i go to my passport office and i go to the nadra office and i say hey i am not a muslim anymore change my religion you know what the question is why did you want to change the religion dude that's my problem no why did you not why do you want to change the religion because i am not a muslim anymore why do you not believe in muhammad as the last prophet no do you not believe muhammad as a prophet no blasphemy put him into jail section 295a 3 years in imprisonment so in america in other countries the prisoner who has molested a child is treated the worst prisoner correct yes in pakistan and in all the muslim countries the person who has done blasphemy is treated as a child molester so he will be gang raped raped beaten up kicked and everything within those 3 years and if he survives he will come out <laughs> so there this this uh, there's no law for christian eh? there is law according to law but there is no law <laughs> So why why do you think I have a target face? There's there's a meaning behind this picture. 
what is it? But but no, I, I think you need to speak to. You have to send yeah uh, email or to any any international community so they can tell you. Dude, they, like h- how many times I have raised voice? You can't go to my 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 YouTube channel. You will see for a lot of women I have ra- raised voice. The thing is, <clears throat> it's not possible. They, they have the America cannot push pressure on Pakistan because America needs Pakistan to do certain things. Uh, why would somebody push something on Pakistan? There, is there any Christian country in the world? There is no Christian country in the world. These are secular countries. America is a secular country. Europe is a secular country. Every th- every country is a secular country. None of the countries in the world are Christian countries. The only Christian country is the Roman Pope country, which is a small pa- in inside the Paris. There is a small city kind of a thing, which is a Christian country. The rest are not even Christian countries. Give me one Christian country. You have. Christian population countries or Christian majority countries, but there is not a single country which you can call as a Christian country. Can you? No, no. Mm-hmm. So, where can the pressure come up? Nowhere. So there are human rights activists who are working in Pakistan, trying to do certain things, but they have limited resources and limited power, and they are doing a lot. Yes, but like. Within their limited resources and limited power, whereas Pakistan but as a law. But is there any any chance or nothing chance about that? How, how can you change? You can you can save two percent per year, five percent per year, hundred percent per year. I'm telling you, four hundred infants are molested like this, and so many people are killed in their own houses or houses being burned and everything. You don't even know about them. Like it doesn't even reaches the news. It's in the village. The 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 Chaudhary, the 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 owner of that village just did it, whatever. Go do whatever you so, want to do. The police is in the pocket of that. They, they cover it. Sorry. If they the government they cover the if there's any house they burn the house. Dude, that that the, in the village the power is for the Chaudhary. You know, every village has a Chaudhary. Every village has a owner of the land. So the villages villages in Pakistan has. Uh, in such a way that the owner who has the majority of the land or 80 percent of the land of the village is the owner of the land, and the police is in his pocket. It's just like a corrupt police system because he gives some money to police. Bye bye, Tata. You can't do jack. So why don't why don't you move to India? It's close, right? It, but uh, you, you, you think going to India is like a piece of cake? Like it's 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 not. It's it's. It's not that easy as you think, and plus, they have all the relatives and everybody there. And going to India is almost similar. India has certain areas which are safe for Christians, but then there are other areas which are not. And then, if you are moving to India, you need to have some money to get the house before you getting the job. You are talking about the people in the villages or small towns who doesn't even have the money for tomorrow's meal. Every day they go out, earn some money, come back home. Have some food for their children and their parents. That's it. Like they don't have enough money to get out of that that hole that they are in. So they are snubbed in such a way that getting out for them is almost impossible. They are their slaves almost. Why would they let them run away? So it's meaning just it's just they just say I'm waiting to die here. Nothing else, man. Yes, they are praying every day. They are trying to go to like you have not seen the. Churches in those areas, the churches in those areas are far better than my far worse. Sorry, far worse than my servant quarter in my house. My servant quarter was far better than the churches in those areas. Disaster, right? That's a disaster. Yeah. And I, I was I was born in a family of Sayyid, the one the lady like in Indonesia you guys called are as Habib or Habib whatever the lineage of Muhammad. I was given an extraordinary respect all my life because I am like um, my 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 uh, people would not even sit right next to me. My family members would, but my my some of my friends from the village they don't even sit right next to me. They sit below me. I am from the Sayyid family. Now, if they find out what I have done, 
like they will use target practice on me with their guns that's how simple it is in pakistan so i think i spoke a lot in english <laughs> yeah i have read a story about a woman a woman in pakistan it is a story of this woman also came from sayyid lineage and she converts to christianity after she got healed miraculously jesus came to her and uh heal heal her from uh, polio before she cannot walk cannot doing uh things by herself and then she got healed and and walk and preach the gospel hallelujah she yeah. she wouldn't be preaching it in pakistan for sure i don't know uh, uh based on the story she she was born in in the 50s okay so she she can't be preaching it in pakistan because in pakistan she would be dead the next day that's how simple it is especially sayyids you know any Christ, any person who say i am an ex muslim these muslims comes up hey hey uh, recite me surah fatiha do this you were never a muslim etc etc how can they let a sayyid preach openly it's it, they do not let the sayyids preach openly they'll kill them the next day you will not even find their bodies if they are in pakistan mm -hmm. i guarantee you that yeah So it's very hard for Christian live in Pakistan, yeah. It sure is. Even the even the one and only representative of Christian body in the government, okay, one and only representative in the in the in the government, uh, government uh, sector house sector, he cannot say Muhammad. He have to say Muhammad peace be upon him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. he has to how can he talk about his 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 people he can he cannot do jack on that he has no authority if you if you can't speak about muhammad how can you say anything to islam or about islam how can you remove the blasphemy law the only person in pakistan who was a muslim and tried to remove the blasphemy law is Suleiman Tasin he is a muslim guy who said mm -hmm. that blasphemy law like anybody who says anything wrong about muhammad he should be killed that's the blasphemy law 295c act of pakistan 1971 he stated that in 2014 in the house government and tried to pass it as a law you know you have to first pass the verdict and then it it becomes the law right so people has to do voting on it in the house and etc etc right the very next day when the news came out his own bodyguard emptied the full gun on him and that bodyguard for these house people are not normal bodyguards they are police officer bodyguards they are police officer bodyguards mm -hmm. he emptied the full gun into him 11 bullets in his body finished done deal mm -hmm. and that guard who was put to jail the case ran for 4 years imagine 4 years it's a simple case open air he killed him in public but 4 years because of the pressure of the islamic communities in pakistan the case kept on lingering and lingering and lingering 4 years 4 years later he was put in put to hang to death because it was he, he killed somebody right so <clears throat> there are over mm. 400000 people 400000 people over 400000 people who attended his funeral and his his grave is a tomb in pakistan people go and do uh, give sadqas and zakats over there and and give chadri over there and like it's it's a tomb where people go and visit mm -hmm. to a murder mm. what reality uh, and reality sorry, uh Sorry uh uh what what his name Suleiman Tasin you can read it on the internet Suleiman Tasin in okay. Pakistan killed okay. for removing blasphemy law It's a it's a very mm. huge case 
it it went international yeah and due to because it went international mm -hmm. that is why this guy was hanged till that otherwise it would not have done yeah yeah horrible how about the christianity do you see that the christianity is developing in your country not at all christianity is is so snubbed in pakistan that we have certain sects of christians who say yes muhammad is also a prophet so they are diminishing mm -hmm. the christianity in such a way that you, if you have to say muhammad peace be upon him every day you have to listen to this adhan every day you cannot say anything wrong about muhammad any day you cannot listen what islam did in the wrong way you only look at the right things you only look at the things which they say in such a nice way what happens after generation to generation this is what happens you have certain okay. sects mm -hmm. who actually believe that oh, okay yeah there could be a prophet after jesus muhammad was one of the prophet that is fine jesus is lord he did not think of jesus as lord because jesus is just a man he is lord when he is not in a flesh and blood so he was lord above and then there is a unitarian christian who believes in muhammad as well there's like there are sexual groups after groups coming up in pakistan because of these kind of teachings and because of not showing the true islam in pakistan you can't show the true islam mm -hmm. yeah so it's a false sect of christianity yeah not just one i'm telling you multiple many oh. of them are arising many false sects are arising in pakistan Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm. I was working with multiple Christian groups in Pakistan mm -hmm. through the internet before mm -hmm. my Facebook account was blocked. You know, I'm dead according mm -hmm. to Facebook. Have you Have you seen my video? Mm, not yet. Yes. Yeah, face, uh, the lot of Muslims sent messages to Facebook that Adam Seeker has died. So my account is now memorial account. So if you go to my Adam Seeker oh. Facebook account, it will say. Uh, thank you for visiting Adam Seeker. Yes, in memory of Adam Seeker, he's passed away. So, etc., etc., etc. Funny, yeah. I thought, okay. I thought sir, okay. I thought I shared already to to you guys about Adam Adam Facebook. I thought I already share. Anna Ines. Oh uh, yeah, I, I haven't yeah. I haven't checked Facebook for a while. Maybe it's last year. Uh, I was. <coughs> no, no, Ada I yang mau tanya nih? My my group. I broadcast to our yeah. group before. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, hang yeah, on, hang yeah, on. Let me down. ask. Uh, let me ask you, Adam. Uh, Somebody is raising uh, a hand. Uh, rather, I'll ask you first. Hmm. Uh, tell us about Abdullah ibn ibn Abi Sar, the first uh, the first murdadin. For Abdullah ibn Sar, you can go and watch my video, brother. Have you watched my video about Abdullah ibn Sar? Oh, it's yes. Abdullah ibn Ibn Sarah. Yeah, yeah, that one. You have seen it? Uh, on your channel? Mm hmm. No. Oh, okay. okay. So I'll give going to give each and every one because I have shown over there in this video using nine different tafsirs, not just one, and you will not find these tafsirs translated into English. They are only in Arabic. So hence, you have to watch this. Because you mm -hmm. will not find it in any other language other than Arabic. Uh, so it is a revelation. It is called Quran, a revelation. And there you go. I am sharing you the link. If you want to know complete about Abdullah ibn Sarah, this is the video that you must watch. I so they try they try to cover up the story about how he went apostate. Yes, the the story goes like this: that Muhammad was telling him the famous embryology verse, and right, at yeah. the end of the famous embryology verse, Abdullah ibn Sarah was so excited and so magnified, and he said, "Wallah, what a great verse! Allah is the best of all creators." Okay. And Muhammad said, okay, write it as is. This is also in the revelation. And Abdullah ibn Sarah said, okay, if this is the revelation from Allah, then I have received this revelation from Allah as well. Because I did not receive the revelation from Allah, then Muhammad, you are a liar. And then he apostated. It is there in 
is this story is there in uh, Siratun Nabi by Ibn Ishaq. It is there in multiple Tirmidhi, Tibri, and multiple other tafsirs. And I have shown all those tafsirs. They are in Arabic. So I have shown the Arabic. I have shown the translations. I have shown everything. This is the problem. And that is why the video name is Quran, a revelation, really. So uh, I have shared the link and you can subscribe to my channel. I have, I have multiple, multiple things over there. You, it's, that's, that's what I'm doing. I'm only doing this. I'm, I'm exposing the deception of uh, Islam and Islamic scholars. You guys must watch it. Everyone oh, who's hi. here must watch it. That's, that's a very, very important video to watch. Hello? Yeah, I, I, I also watched the Christian Prince uh, talk about Abdullah ibn Sarah, but uh, like we don't have uh, multiple sources about the stories. But we nine know, sources. Uh, nine sources uh, about the stories, right? <coughs> okay, yeah, that should be a note. Um, I want to ask you something about like, um, have you ever heard about the seal of the Prophet? Yeah, there was a stamp seal of the Prophet on the back of Muhammad. That seal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, they, like, don't, Muslims don't deny you know? it. Can, can you don't show you it? Have, can you, mm -hmm. Don't you have a seal in your body somewhere? I have a seal on my upper lips. Okay, so uh, <laughs> everyone must have a seal in their body one place or another yeah. anyways, right? So oh, this, uh, is not, yeah. this is not called a seal. It is called a birthmark. Okay, yeah. so most of the people have some kind of a birthmark. By the way, I have one in the back as well. So, yeah, I am a prophet. Oh, so you are the prophet. <laughs> yeah, I am the prophet. So, by the way, this thing was given to him by uh, uh, a Jewish uh, monk called Bohera. So, when Muhammad was still a child, it's you can find this whole story in uh, Siratun Nabi by Ibn Hishaq. Uh, Muhammad was still a child. He was going. And then you can also find in Ibn Kathir uh, the Qissa Sul Anbiya. The Qissa Sul Anbiya means the story of the prophets. And this is not the Ibn Kathir of the 12th century. This is the Ibn Kathir of the 8th century. The one who actually wrote uh, uh, the Mus'haf of Quran as well, the version of Quran as well. You know, the Hafs version, the Versh version. And then there is a Kaloon version. Then there is a Ibn Kathir version. So Ibn Kathir version of Quran was apparently written by Ibn Kathir in the 8th century. That's a different Ibn Kathir than the Ibn Kathir of the Tafasir. The Tafasir Ibn Kathir was written in 12th century, 1200 something AD. Ah, and he also stated that. So Bukhara the monk actually saw Muhammad when Muhammad was visiting that area with his uncle Abu Talib. And Bukhara the monk looked at this guy who was very lonely, sad, etc. etc. And he was a very nice guy because obviously his mother died, his father died, his grandfather died. He was living in isolation. What was he? He was like a tiny, tiny, small kind of a kid who is in isolation, right? Bukhara the monk looked at his uh, back and he said, Oh, that looks like a seal. He might be a prophet. He might become a prophet when he grow up. Because when you were coming here, I saw that the clouds covered you guys from the sun. So <clears throat> you, guys, you guys are traveling with a prophet. So that's the story of the seal. <laughs> oh, okay. So it's like a hairy mold on the back of the Muhammad, of, of, of Muhammad, right? I won't say hairy mole. Okay. <laughs> I, nobody knows about the hairy mole. I don't have a hairy mole on the back. It's like a, it's like a stamp kind of a thing. Stamp doesn't, is not, stamp is not, uh, uh, mole is like a mountain, right? You know, I don't know how to translate it. Like, like a tumor, like a tumor. Yeah, a tumor, right? Like it's not a tumor. It's just a, it's just a paint, you know, that you have sometimes. On your bodies, uh -huh. one way or another, like some some place on your body, like this, like mole is different. I won't say mole. It's it's like a birthmark. You know, certain people have birthmarks. They have some small, one inch, two inch black spot on their body somewhere, leg or arm or back or somewhere like that. I have two more questions. I think there are two more raised hands. So let's answer them, and then I will probably take part. Ya silakan uh, tanya yang angkat tangan itu. Uh, bisa terjemahin. Oke. Okay. Eh uh, Demseker tahu cerita Usman enggak? 
Osman Ibnu Avan. Iya, Usman bin Avan. Ya pastilah. Ya. Coba ya, uh, untuk Usman bin Avan. Iya, uh, bisa uh, ceritain tentang, ke tentang kenapa Usman dipotong tangannya nggak? He asked why Us uh, Usman have been uh, his hand has been cut. Do you know about the story <laughs> of Usman ibn Affan? Hmm. Okay. Terus gimana cerita matinya? Huh? Okay. Terus, terus gimana cerita matinya? Karena alasan so, apa dan bagaimana? You want the Muslim died. story? You want you want the Muslim story or you want the Christian story or you want the atheist story? <laughs> <laughs> There's no Christian story in Uthman, uh, Usman uh, Ibn Affan. Okay, Christian so apology how, story. How, how, yeah, how he died and somebody killed him. Number one. Yeah, somebody, somebody killed, killed him. Mm -hmm. Yes, somebody killed him. Right after the death of Muhammad, there was a huge uh, rift. Okay, there Who is a huge. Him? There is a huge rift. According to Shias, one of their guy killed him because he was taking people away from the pure Islam. That's the Shias verdict. Translate somebody for him. Hmm, jadi menurut Syiah uh, mereka yang membunuh Utsman Ibn Affan ini ya karena dia uh, membawa umat itu keluar daripada Islam yang sejati. Jadi menurut Syiah mereka yang bunuh nih dari kelompok Syiah ini. And after killing him the guy came back to Ali and Ali pushed his back and said, "Okay, go vanish." And this guy flew from Makkah and went to some other place and he was saved by Ali. That's written in Kitabul Kafi of Syiah Islam. Jadi orang yang membunuh Utsman bin Affan ini datang ke Ali gitu ya, terus Ali mendorong dia katanya, udah kamu lari aja sana kabur katanya gitu kan, artinya dia kabur keluar dari Mekah dan ini ada ditulis kisahnya di dalam kitab uh, Al Kafi, ya. jadi kitabnya orang Syiah seperti uh, hadisnya ya seperti Al Bukhari. Not Bukhari, Al Kafi. Shia yeah, yeah, book I mean, is Al Kafi. Uh, Al Kafi, it's uh, the same like uh, Sunni's uh, Al Bukhari. Yes, uh, Sahih exactly. Hadis. Yeah, okay. Yes. Then we can go to Shia Sunni Islam. According to Sunni Islam, the polytheists started to have a war right after the death of Muhammad. Uthman was very brave and etc. etc. So polytheists tried to kill him in the darkness of the night. Jadi kalau menurut versinya Sunni, orang-orang politeis penyembah berhala pada waktu itu terjadi perang itu setelah Muhammad mati. Terus Uthman ibnu Affan ini sangat-sangat berani ya akhirnya uh, mereka mencoba membunuhnya uh, di tengah-tengah malam buta gitu. Because Usman was a very fighter, big fighter guy and etc, etc. So nobody was able to kill him when he was uh, fighting. So they killed him in the darkness of the night. Yeah, jadi Usman ini pelawan perang ya. Jadi kalau 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 dia lagi perang itu nggak ada yang bisa ngalahin dia gitu. Jadi mereka coba diam-diam mau membunuh Usman ini tengah di tengah-tengah malam buta. Now the theoretical thing is that Usman burned all the Qurans according on that time. And he created his own Quran. Jadi alasan utamanya karena pada waktu itu Utsman Ibn Affan ini membakar ya versi-versi Quran lainnya dan dia menciptakan versi Qurannya sendiri. There is a fair possibility that somebody wanted to kill him because he destroyed all the Quran and created his own one single Quran. If you believe yeah. in the Quran narration story, I do not believe in that story as well. So. Ya, jadi kayak kata Adam sih kemungkinan alasan utamanya orang tuh nggak suka gitu karena Utsman Ibn Affan ini membakar versi-versi Quran lainnya dan dia menciptakan satu versinya sendiri. Jadi ini mungkin alasannya kenapa orang-orang mau membunuh Utsman ini. So yeah, so it depends on you which story you want to believe. So I have given you all three. Okay. So so nobody really knows who who exactly killed uh, Utsman Ibn Affan. Uh, and, and, uh, there will be different stories given to you by different sects of Islam. That's what I'm telling you. That's I told you the the whole three stories. <laughs> oh, okay, jadi nggak nggak ada yang tahu pasti ada tiga versi cerita nih. Uh, Utsman Ibn Affan uh, mati. So why they cut his hand? What for? Because he 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 wrote his own version of Quran. They did not cut his hand. I, I, I don't think I saw a story where his cutting of his hand is mentioned as well. They killed him in the darkness of the night. That's what I know. If if there is a reference for cutting his hand, send me. I will gonna study it and I'll see which scholar is saying that. I do not know about oh. that. Katanya dia dia nggak pernah dengar cerita kalau tangannya dipotong. Yang dia dia tahu ya, Utsman ibn Affan ini dibunuh gitu di tengah-tengah malam. Tapi uh, kalau kamu punya referensi tangannya dipotong, boleh kasih ke Adam. Nanti Adam mau pelajarin dulu katanya. 
Oh, oke, okay, thank you. Oke, okay, Pak Hin. Ya, ya Bu Sofia tuh. Aku uh, mau share screen. Aku mau share screen sebentar. Oke. Okay. Ya. Uh, screen. Is somebody asking something? Yeah, yeah he yes, wants I to sh uh, share the screen. Yeah. So he wants you to show. He wants to show something in the screen. Uh -uh. Udah keluar belum ya? Screennya? Belum, Pak. Ah, belum ya, sebentar. Coba saya pencet dulu. Ini. We should have been live for these things as well. A lot of people would have gotten some more information. Uh, But anyhow. You are live now on YouTube. Hmm. Oh, I am? You are I didn't live know that. now, yeah. Awesome. I didn't Sekarang know that. Sekarang udah keluar belum ya, Bu? Belum juga belum. ya? Belum. Belum ah, ya. Yang hijau-hijau di bawah itu, Pak. Ya, pencet. saya udah pencet. Lalu pencet apa nih? Pilihannya ada banyak ya. Si Uh, aduh, oh, only host can share the screen. Oh, oke. Okay. Tapi saya belum jadi co-host ya. Maksudnya sudah, sudah. Oh, udah, udah, udah. Fine, udah co-host. Harusnya Tapi bisa. Oke, saya, okay. saya pencet share screen ya. Terus ada pilihnya foto, iCloud, drop, <coughs> pilih yang mana? Screen, 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 pak, screen. Pilih screen, oke. Okay. Pilih screen, yeah. lalu pilih apa nih? Oh, ada ya. Yang mana? Yang, mana? yang, yang Pak Hin mau screen? Saya mau cari di Facebooknya saya di HP cara keluar gimana nih? Tapi nggak keluar. Anyway, uh, Adam, aku screen, pengen tanya uh, get, get the permission. Uh, when you share the screen, there hmm. is a new window which will come and which will say ask permission to share screen. And then uh, click on that button. Is the co-host so. should be able to share the screen? Iya, tapi aku udah share screen, aku pencet share screen nih, yang keluarnya foto, I, cloud drive, drop, Microsoft OneDrive, gitu, nggak ada pilihan apa-apa gitu. Pilihannya apa ya, Pak? Aku nih nggak bisa share screen. Iya. Is this a Quran verse that you want to show? No, no, I just want to uh, show you the picture. The okay. picture... Uh, Mungkin dikasih ke host kali Pak, coba nanti biar di, di share screen sama host. Oh iya, oke, oke. Saya saya nggak pakai HP soalnya, pakai iPad. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe Yaudah. to hang on. Anyway, apa ya? Gimana? Pak Bagus mungkin. Api yang, api yang, api yang lah. Uh, Tepat bagus coba. Coba Pak Bagus ini, bisa share. Coba Pak Pak Hin. Uh, share ke Pak Bagus tuh. Tulis di, ke ini Pak di kolom chat, jadi bisa di share share screen. Iya, di kolom, di kolom chat. chat. Iya. Wah, apa bagus saja? Saya mau kirim gambar soalnya. Ya udah. Wah, apa bagus? Ah ya ya. Anyway, saya pengen tanya gini loh. Kalau beja saya kan waktu itu ada ministry ke Pakistan ya. Lalu di Pakistan itu ada satu desa. Dia itu khusus membuat batu bata. Jadi mereka itu dari keturunan sampai keturunan berikutnya itu mutang gitu loh. Jadi uh, maksudnya kok pemerintah Pakistan itu ya tidak ada bagaimana supaya orang ini masyarakatnya dia itu keluar dari hutang sama yang rentenirnya gitu loh. Kasian sekali ini. Saya pengen kasih lihat fotonya cuman nggak bisa. Sayang sekali gitu. Aku pengen tanya apakah pemerintah di Pakistan ini kan Islam tuh. Di orang nggak ada peduli apa sama mereka-mereka ini gitu orang-orangnya tuh Kristen apa Islam Pak yang Islam ini bentar Islam. bentar Pak Hin Pak Hin send aja ke ID-nya Adam Pak Hin kan punya itu di share aja langsung dikirim nanti bilang oh, ke Adam iya, iya. aku send ke ke ID-mu Adam gitu jadi Adam biar dilihat hmm. langsung atau share di grup ya share di grup kita share oke saya share, share di grup share di grup nanti Adam bisa lihat share di grup ya, grup, ya. Iya di, di WA grup aja. Dari Facebook bisa share ke grup. Nah, bisa. Di, 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 di capture dulu Pak Pak Hin. Di, di, oh iya 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 di capture. Di capture okay. lalu desain di grup kita itu loh. Okay, Langsung ya, Adam kan ya. bisa baca situ. Iya iya iya. 
Adam, Mr. Hin would, would like to send the picture of his uh, on his phone to our group, our Telegram group, Adam. You can watch it there. Okay. Bu Sofia pun bisa, bisa kasih pertanyaannya dulu aja Bu. Ini kasihan sekali ini sih. Sampai yeah, he wants sampai. To, to show you uh, uh, his church before had uh, ministry to Pakistan. Yeah. So they went to Pakistan and one of the village there, um, the people, the community, they, they made bricks and uh, they got, you know, uh, by, um, they have a lot of debt. So uh, he wants to know why why the government of oh. of Pakistan uh, they Debnya don't care. Yeah, they had a debt okay. from generation to generation. Uh, utangnya ke siapa pak? Utangnya ke pemerintah atau kemana? Bukan ke satu orang kaya. While while he while he sends that file, let me show you something. Aku while he sends the file, mana? I will show you something on this particular topic. Let me okay. let me share my screen. For this purpose, oh, yeah, he said the whole village had one debt to the one man, maybe he's such a chaudhry or yes. a lane, uh, land owner or something like like that. So, exactly, that's called chaudhry, yeah, huh? that is called chaudhry, chaudhry, yep. tuan tanah, gitu, kayak tuan tanah. Yeah, gitu. yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go, can you see my screen? Yeah, okay. It's in English, yes. so you can translate. So I'm gonna play and I'm gonna stop where to translate. Parties and they want lawmakers to amend it. Taha Siddiqui and Jasmine Lavoie report. This mother has not heard from her daughter for over two years. Yeah, ini ibu ini nggak belum pernah dengar kabar. While the teenager was playing with other children in this Hindu village in southern Pakistan, a group of men came and kidnapped her. They came and took my daughter away. It was a nearby Muslim family. her back and were able to get her but they came back and said she is married in our family and converted diculik diperkosa terus dikatakan dia udah udah nikah kok sama keluarga kita dan udah masuk ke muslim eh udah masuk ke islam katanya the second time they came they took her at gunpoint pada kedua dia datang dia a gun a gunpoint yes they they a gun Oh, dia 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 bawa bawa senjata ke desa itu. For teenage girls in Pakistan's Sindh province, such violence is a common occurrence. Jadi kejahatan kayak They're gini tuh kayak udah apa ya, udah umum terjadi gitu di desa-desa di Pakistan, anak-anak perempuan diculik. So, they are very Only one girls from which is 400 is Christian. Total 1,000 is for Hindus and Jews and all the rest of the sex as well. So that's a total 1,000 number. But for Christians, that's 400. So the 600 jadi, is the rest of the communities. Yeah, jadi bukan cuma orang Kristen aja ya. Sana anak-anak perempuannya diculik. Uh, tadi kan ada bilang 400-an itu orang Kristen. Tapi total itu 1,000 gitu. Dari ada yang orang Hindu dan ada orang-orang Yahudi. Pokoknya semua orang yang non-Muslim di sana tuh. Anak-anak gadisnya diculikin sama mereka. Terus diperkosa, dikawinin. Common occurrence. There are nearly 1,000. Uh, right, under you already... age. Under age yes. means children? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, children. Oh, it's not. It's not even a teenagers. No, under thirteen, underage means before menstruation. That, that's what I was showing earlier when 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 uh, when Egyptian kafir was saying, and I, I explained it that you can marry even. Come on, yeah, that's what I have been saying since since mm -hmm. start. Jadi yang diculik yeah. tuh anak-anaknya di bawah tiga belas tahun ya. Uh, ini mengerikan sekali sih, oh Tuhan. Oke. Okay. This, this is already criminal, Adam. It's not. 
Okay, I, I don't know what you said. Repeat. Did this criminal or is already criminals? I don't know this if it's criminal. criminal or not. No, I will show you why it is not criminal. Hold on. To criminalize these kidnappings, forced they want conversions, to criminalize and it. forced no, weddings. Listen what he says. The government recently introduced a new law. Mechanism of complaint, definition, and punishment, say everything on that. Even though the law was passed unanimously by the Sint Assembly, the provincial government has now come under pressure to withdraw a clause See? that religious lobbies have that. labeled anti-Islam. Jadi malah, sebenarnya mereka mau apa ya, mengkriminalisasi penculikan-penculikan ini, cuman jadi dituduh anti-Islam. Because it's a sorry law, they can marry underage. Uh, yes, children. so basically the federal government passed it, but all the provincial government rejected it because it's not according to Islam. So hence, anyone can at any age convert to Islam. So they they were not able to pass it as a law. Jadi walaupun udah, udah mau dijadikan undang-undang bahwa penculikan ini adalah suatu tindakan kriminal yang bisa dihukum pemerintah pusat, tapi pemerintah provinsinya pada nggak mau gitu. Karena ini ini bertentangan dengan hukum Islam yang mengatakan uh, siapapun boleh masuk ke Islam sekalipun mereka itu di bawah, di, uh, mereka boleh menikahi anak-anak di bawah umur. Jadi undang-undang ini nggak bisa lolos gitu loh. The clause prevents anyone under the age of 18 from converting their religion. The religious uh, leaders are objecting to the age. They said there should not be any age and a person can be converted at yeah, any age. So the government wants to um, make a law basically if you are under 18, you cannot convert to other religion, right? So it was enforced on the federal government to do that. So the mm. law passed the house, but every province rejected it. So it is not a law. Yeah, Still jadi, not a law. Yeah, jadi sebenarnya pemerintah tuh mau membatasi usia kalau di bawah usia 18 tahun tuh nggak boleh dipaksa gitu pindah agama. Tapi pemerintah provinsinya nggak mau gitu, nggak menolak gitu, menolak undang-undang ini. By group who does not have a representation in the assembly and who are just a few percent of the total population, just for the votes or vote bank, if it is being reviewed. See, we so don't like the whole really. population who is in trying to enforce this law is just a few percentage. It's just a few percentage. So they have no representation in the house or the majority. Hence, it will not become a law. Jadi cuma sedikit aja nih orang-orang yang bisa mempus undang-undang ini. Jadi kalah nih sama suara mayoritas. Karena mereka yeah. takut Mbak Sofia ya. Diancam so, pasti. Iya. Yeah. Check this out now. Jadi kalau undang-undang ini undang-undang ini lolos, sebenarnya penculik-penculik oh. itu bisa dipenjarakan gitu loh. I don't know. Ya ini susahnya, jadi nggak bisa jadi undang-undang. You have to tell me when you finish translation because when you pause, I think that you have finished translation. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, okay, go on. This madrasa or Quranic school in Karachi is known for its hardliner and intolerant Islamic ideology. Over 5,000 children study here. Ya ini madrasa yang paling ketat ya aturannya. Dan ini tidak punya toleransi nih terhadap agama. Nah, jadi Islamnya Islam cekek gitu ya. Ada sekitar lima, lima ribu nih anak-anak pemuda di situ. Oke, okay, oke, okay, go on. Please stand up and recite some Quranic verses. The head cleric here is at the forefront of the campaign against this new law. He believes that forced conversions rarely happen. He, according to this guy, forced conversion is rarely what happens. So he against or he supports the forced conversion? No, he, he said it rarely happens, doesn't matter. Now look what he's going to say. They happen. 
खड़े हो जाएंगे वी विल स्टैंड अगेंस्ट दिस लॉ द होल नेशन विल नॉट एक्सेप्ट दिस वी विल टेक द रोड्स टू प्रोटेस्ट मुझे लगता है आई थिंक दिस लॉ वुड एंड देयर गवर्नमेंट एंड दे विल नॉट इवन बी एबल टू विन द नेक्स्ट इलेक्शंस टू जदि दिया दिया बिलांग या मेमंग ada pemaksaan di dalam agama jadi mereka pengin uh, apa Islam ini maksudnya boleh gitu diislamkan orang lain tuh boleh dipaksa untuk jadi masuk Islam dan kalau pemerintah sampai meloloskan tadi undang-undang yang mengkriminal mengkriminalisasi tadi ya mereka nggak akan dipilih lagi gitu tahun depannya nearly 3 million Hindus live in Pakistan's Sindh province these onion fields have belonged to Parak's family for generations Many Hindus this in this is area international have pressure they're putting on the authorities. Well, uh, no, this is international media We're just talking so about pressurizing convert. Pakistan. So I just skipped forward some. Jones law. Do you think they'll end up getting their way? They want an amendment. Do you think that they will get their way because of how much pressure they're putting on the authorities? Well, uh, first of all, uh, there is something tricky of course in the Islamist discourse and it's not the first time that it does happen. uh they say that they are against uh, the impossibility of conversion but the law is not about conversion the law is against forced conversion and it makes all the difference because the, the specificity of this law which is not yet confirmed by the governor of sin which means that for the time being yes and it's absolutely remarkable Jadi sebenarnya orang ini ngomong undang-undang itu diciptakan bukan tentang orang-orang itu tidak boleh uh, convert ya atau tidak tidak boleh murtad atau pindah agama, tapi sebenarnya pemaksaannya itu yang nggak boleh, itu nggak boleh dipaksa untuk pindah agama, tapi ya nggak bisa lolos nih undang-undangnya. No, this is Christianity. You see these Christians, they are wearing the headscarves and everything. They have to do everything according to Islamic Pakistan. They they can't. They have to wear things according to Pakistan as well. Hmm, jadi wanita-wanita Kristen di sana ya tetap harus pakai hijab ya. Um, Pakistani President uh, uh, Mr. Zardari, who is expecting to be uh, elected in a by-election in a few weeks from now, and whose party is governing Sindh after having governed Pakistan, yeah, forget that. but has lost power years ago. Uh, we hear a discourse from the development bureaucracy uh, last year, 2016, when here again the local province. But uh, is it an issue nationwide, and and just how big of an issue? Okay. Yeah, yeah, uh, well, we, I'll show we you have one a, more thing. A, a credible. Hold on. Uh, they are trying to now talk about how they can fix that, but they cannot. Okay. Well. I- I think looking at this Indonesia is much more uh you know better condition we are here. Now this is purely about Christians. So you you, you people tell tell me about oh, Pakistan you were lying you're lying look okay, this is how we live where all faiths could thrive. But since the mid 70s a dramatic shift has been emerging. when prime minister nawaz sharif who was recently thrust back into the limelight for mounting a revolt against what he called the current regime's oppression he had played a large part in pushing the pakistani constitution closer to becoming an islamic state so since 1970 i told you 1971 was the, was the time when the the amendment was done in pakistan for the blasphemy law so that's when the degradation of muslim started to go extreme degradation of non muslim started to go to extreme and this is what she is telling you about the nawaz sharif's first government of 1990 uh, 1990 something i forgot when and the yes. on the background is the christian mm-hmm. community that i was showing you in the capital of pakistan the islamabad this is in the background it's pakistan capital islamabad not a village Pakistan capital Islamabad that's how Christians live on the background that you see. Hmm. Jadi di background-nya tadi latar belakangnya ini ini komunitas Kristen yang bukan di desa ya ini di ibu kotanya di Islamabad di Pakistan. Jadi sejak tahun 1970 undang-undang penodaan agama itu mulai diberlakukan jadi mulai muncullah Islam Islam ekstrem di sana. 
For some members of the Christian community, as you'll see in this report, they've paid a high price for being in the minority. Now, at the centre of their tales of ostracism and discrimination are controversial blasphemy laws imposing a very real fear of being perceived as un-Islamic. Jadi ini undang-undang penodaan agama ketika diberlakukan itu uh, di bawah hukum undang-undang syariah ya. Jadi ditekan ini orang-orang yang non-muslim ini. Worryingly, more and more cases of forced conversions from Christianity to Islam are also being reported. Our reporters travelled to meet one community in Islamabad, living in what's been dubbed the French Quarter, living, as you will see in this report, in utter poverty. Jadi orang-orang Kristen di sana ya tinggalnya dalam kemiskinan ya, dan banyak yang akhirnya uh, dipaksa convert atau masuk ke Islam nih orang-orang komunitas Kristen di sana. Literally walled off from the rest of society. Islam, its showcase, the King Faisal Mosque, one of the largest in the Muslim. It's known as the French Colony in remembrance. This is how they live, French Colony in Islamabad, the capital of Pakistan. This is how Christians live. And then the camera will go to the Muslim society and you will see how beautiful Islamabad Muslim society is. Ini jadi tempat tinggalnya orang-orang Kristen di Islamabad ya, yang disebut dengan koloni-koloni Prancis ya, jadi bekas koloni Prancis, bekas jajahan Prancis di sana. It's of the French embassy which used to be located there. 5,000 Christians live here without running water, electricity or garbage collection. Dari lima ribu orang Kristen yang tinggal di sini tanpa dipasilitasi pemerintah untuk listrik atau air bersih dan sebagainya ya benar-benar nggak diperhatikan sama pemerintah. Samang is a young Christian, 19 years old. He invited us to his neighborhood where Pakistani Muslims never come. The friend. Ya ini Salman ini orang um, anak muda Kristen ya usianya baru 19 tahun. Dia undang reporter ini datang untuk melihat gitu dan uh, tempat di mana orang muslim itu nggak bakal masuk ke sini. Settlement has a dangerous reputation. So Samang makes it a point of honor to welcome us and introduce his family. This is my grandfather and this is my grandmother. Okay. This is my auntie. Among the Christians who work they often have poorly paid domestic jobs. This is the case in Samang's family. His mother... Jadi dia kenalin Salman ini welcome gitu ya. Yuk lihat-lihat masuk ke rumahnya yuk keluarganya dikenalin ini. Kakeknya, keluarganya, ya saudara-saudaranya. Mereka kebanyakan digajinya cuma sedikit aja nih orang-orang Kristen di sana nih. Okay, the two communities is symbolized by the wall that surrounds so the, the wall that surrounds the settlement even has glass broken glasses on it so that you will not jump through the wall by the way this is the wall that they built to surround this city so-called hmm. city inside a city jadi dibangun tembok ini yang memisahkan bahkan ada kaca-kaca yang tajam itu supaya orang-orang tuh enggak sembarangan uh, masuk ke komunitas Kristen ini gitu ya jadi dibangun semacam tembok moment it was built six months ago. Here, it is topped with shards of broken glass. On the other side, the wall is too high to climb over. So now Samang must make a long detour to return home. Temboknya dibangunnya udah tinggi banget, dikasih gelas-gelas tajam. Jadi Samang ini kalau pulang mesti muter jalannya karena ada tembok gitu. Jadi nggak bisa langsung pulang ke rumahnya. He died, but there is something else they want to protect here. The residents of the wealthy neighborhood. This man does not know he was being filmed. Yeah, sedangkan di lingkungan sebelah tetangganya itu ini lingkungan orang-orang kaya nih di Pakistan. Can live in the center of Islamabad. But they are not good people. They are. They are not good people. They are uh, ignorance. You know, ignore. Yes. Ignore and then is a mafia, you know, drug mafia, drug. They are all drug users. All of them? All of them drug user and also drug supplier. Supplier? Uh, yes, sir. As you know, that's underworld. He invites us to approach the wall. A wall that, Those according to small. him, no one wants to oh, tear this. down. Oh, yes. And uh, who built it? 
uh, some owners they are living here in this side and then this side. Okay. It's Pakistani bureaucrat, like uh, politicians. A few minutes later, he realizes the camera is on. Very quickly, he tones down his words. But I like uh, many people. They are Christian, Hindus, Buddhist. It's all. See, suddenly his tone changed when he realized there is a camera behind the scene. Now translate. <laughs> <laughs> Jadi orang ini nggak sadar dia lagi difilmin gitu ya. Terus dia ngomong, kenapa sih itu dibangun tembok tuh orang-orang Kristen? Terus dia berkatakan orang-orang itu bodoh, tahu kan? Orang-orang itu uh, bodoh, miskin kayak gitu. Mereka pemakai itu obat-obatan terlarang, terlarang katanya. Jadi mesti dipisahin. Terus ditanya siapa yang bangun ini? Bangun temboknya itu yang misain? Oh ya ada beberapa orang-orang kaya di sini gitu ya. Uh, apa uh, tuan-tuan tanah ini yang membangun itu. Waktu dia udah tahu kalau itu difilmin, tiba-tiba suaranya berubah. Oh iya, mereka orang Kristen kok, baik. Ada orang Hindu juga baik gitu gitu. Depan this kamera guy, itu. This guy is the official Christian representative. Look what he is going to say. Will improve. The affairs of the Christian neighborhood are now in the hands of Shabazz Bati, the minister for minorities. It's a new position created just six months ago and occupied by one of the few Christians in the government. The only Christian minority representative in the house is this guy, Salman Bhatti. Yeah, Salman Bhatti ini satu-satunya perwakilan dari orang Kristen yang ada di uh, government gitu, dia ada di, di pemerintahan itu untuk uh, khusus uh, golongan-golongan golongan minoritas. Itu dia nih satu-satunya perwakilan orang Kristen yang ada di pemerintahan. And we are here to serve them and we are giving them this hope that their issues will be addressed. They will not be remain neglected. They will not be remain subjugated or second class citizen. Do you know where the French can... Jadi Salman bilang, uh, ya sih semoga ada harapan ya. Supaya orang-orang Kristen itu tidak di, diberlakukan sebagai warga kelas kedua yang selalu di apa ya neglected, um, dibiarkan, gak diurusin kayak gitu. Jadi semoga ini dengan dia ada duduk di pemerintahan, ada harapan lah supaya ini diangkat kehidupannya gitu. But yet this guy will not even go to the wall with them. Yeah, tapi orang ini juga. But during the course of the interview, when we asked him to accompany us to the settlement, quickly together. <laughs> Despite our insistence, he would not accompany us. He knows that given the state of misery his fellow Christians live in, he would not necessarily be welcome there. Jadi bahkan orang ini tuh nggak mau loh pergi ke diajak sama reporternya. Ayo dong lihat komunitasnya secara langsung nih yang di balik tembok itu. Orang ini juga bahkan perwakilan Kristen ini nggak mau gitu karena dia tahu uh, dia nggak juga Gak ini ya sama teman saya sama Kristennya itu karena orangnya miskin gitu loh dia gak, tetap nggak mau ke sana. This is not in our hands to make someone's Muslim ya by uh, forcing them uh, by something else. We can't make that. It's Allah. It's depend on Allah. And if we have, I told you that Christian which are uh, living in our community, they are like our friends. Well, I told you. Now this is on camera. So this is what they say on camera. <laughs> nah, so ini that's depan why you see the difference. Yeah. Hmm. Depan kamera mereka ngomong gini, oh kita nggak bisa kok paksa orang masuk agama Islam itu semua tergantung pada Allah dan orang orang Kristen itu kan teman-teman kita, saudara-saudara kita itu di depan kamera mereka ngomongnya begitu. So on camera is something for different. Check this out. Quran. This is a Christian lawyer representing in the court for Christians. Look what he says. Tahir is a Christian lawyer. He has been campaigning for years to repeal the blasphemy law. The, the, the this guy the... is repealing the blasphemy law. Now imagine he is repealing the blasphemy law. Imagine how he is going to take the name of Muhammad. Watch. Bible says, if anybody will say anything against the Muslim prophet uh, Hazrat Muhammad peace be upon him, he is going to run the blasphemy against blasphemy law. Hazrat Muhammad peace be upon him. Sir Muhammad peace be upon him. This idiot is going to run the case against blasphemy law. Do you think he can run a case against blasphemy law? When he can't even say Muhammad simply. Like is this the guy representing 
Like that's the problem. You can't even say the name of Muhammad simply in Pakistan because if you say, you will come into the blasphemy law. Does he not know that he has to stop saying that to run against the blasphemy law? But he can't. Ya, jadi ini ini adalah pengacara Kristen ya yang mewakili orang-orang Kristen uh, di uh, bidang hukum. Dia sebenarnya um, sudah mengkampanyekan undang-undang anti penodaan agama itu. Cuman dia ketika menyebut nama Muhammad dia tetap mengatakan uh, apa maksudnya uh, dengan gelar-gelar nabi gitu ya, gelar-gelar nabi yang besar gitu ya. Hazrat Muhammad kayak gitu. Dia bahkan nggak bisa bilang simple Muhammad gitu karena dia nanti nanti akan terkena undang-undang penodaan agama sendiri gitu. Padahal nih orang ini mengkampanyekan undang-undang anti penodaan agama. Jadi bagaimana dia bisa mewakili orang Kristen minoritas dan mengkampanyekan anti agama ini bahkan dia nggak bisa sebut nih Muhammad gitu, simple Muhammad gitu dia nggak bisa sebut. If anybody will say anything against him verbally intentionally or unintentionally the punishment will be done jadi kalau ada sesuatu yang hmm, istilahnya dengan sengaja ataupun tidak sengaja gitu ya kira-kira kayak melecehkan nabi islam ini muhammad maka hukumannya adalah hukuman mati so that's the reality of the situation now do i have the video the picture that somebody wanted to send me okay yes i got the pictures Okay, so what about these pictures? This is the same. This is something what I am showing already. So what, what, what are we doing with these pictures? Fotonya sama dengan yang tadi Adam tunjukkan ya Pak? Ya Pak ini udah keluar, <laughs> udah kerja. Oh, ya. Okay. Ya, okay. Udah, udah jawab kok. Udah terjawab. So let me show the pictures to everyone as well. I'm downloading the pictures so that I can show. Okay. Download folder. Okay. Jadi kita masih bersyukur ya di Indonesia belum sampai segitunya. Tapi mari kita jaga terus Pancasila. Okay, what happened to my Zoom? There it is. Share screen. Jadi kalau kalau yang radikal ini berkembang bisa juga Sofia. So, bisa ya, ya, juga. itu makanya tugas kita untuk uh, berdoa terus bagi Indonesia juga. And you gave, them, mm-hmm. you gave yeah, them an English right, chart. Right. They can't even read English. Most of the people in Pakistan can't even read English, by the way. But anyhow, so yeah, the wall behind them is is the church wall, right? Okay. Is is the is that the church wall behind them? Ini apakah tembok yang gereja? Nggak tahu. We don't know. The, the, the guy who asked just left. Okay. So yeah, this this is the miserable condition in the villages. This is the village, and like I said, the churches in the villages are worse than the servant quarters in my house. Like this is this is the reality. Like I I do not deny that. This is the reality of the this, situation of Pakistan. This is a Hindu village. He said this is a Hindu village, and they want a okay. mission. He's just went a mission to Pakistan. Um, and he said that like they they make bricks. So this village, uh, the people make bricks, and they have a debt uh, from generation to generation to a landlord. So the government of the Pakistan they did not do anything about about it. So you, I, I think you mentioned before that in Pakistan, non-Muslims are second class. That is correct. So the debt happens like this. So these people work for the Chaudhary, right. even the Hindus, Hindus, yeah, Hindus, Jews, uh, atheists, uh, um, uh, Sikhs, uh, um, uh, Christians, doesn't matter. The problem, the thing is that Hindus and Christians are majority in minority. So they, 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 they are, you will see the issues with them more, but the rest are there, but they are minorities within minority. So you will hear less about them. Okay. And Hindus, because the next door is India, and there were Hindus in Pakistan before the partition. So Hindus are majority in the minority. Christians are majority in the minority. So they are their newses are more. Otherwise, this is for all minorities. And uh, yes, uh, Hindus, Christian, they, 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 they are in debt because the Chaudhary will give them minimum amount of money. for doing the harvesting on his land minimum amount and they will get after the harvest they will get 
uh, food or anaj the, the 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 whatever is grown for some time so that they could they could eat that so they will have just enough to eat and live so if they need to do anything they will need to get loan from the choudhary who will give the loan with interest the person who is not even earning to do all what he can then how will he return the money plus interest so basically his next generation his kids are now slave of the choudhary because until all the interest plus the money is paid they are forced to work in his land so they are slaves generation after generation and they cannot even get out of it yeah okay we have a breakage in the connection for my translator so so it's very uh, it's india india had a, a better situation Yeah, India had a better situation than this. You think? In the villages, they are almost the same. Hello. And you are breaking up, so you need to translate as well for the people. But yeah, Adam, India is a little better. The in the. Hmm. Guys, I think. Nakita, you are breaking up. You are breaking up so bad. Black line, say something. Because the gaji is too small. It's hard to work. 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 cuma cukup buat makan buat hidup kalau mereka mau mau yang lain mereka harus ngutang ya yeah, what Adam I'm breaking up you are breaking up pretty bad yeah, at least for me hello hello Gray katanya suara saya putus putus nah, no you good udah benar nih udah benar hello okay Okay, okay, okay. Go on, Adam. No, that that's that's all about it. So I think uh, we are good. I think we can yeah, yeah. close so the bridge now if time. required. Mhm. Ya, ya udah mau tutup dulu ya. Gitu. Silakan. Pak, YP gitu tuh, Pak. Okay. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, brother, and thank you everyone. Uh, take care. Have a blessed evening. Thank you, Brother Adam. Thank you, Baby. Take care. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Take care. Brother Adam. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Putus saya barusan. Sorry. Sinyal Pak Pak Baby ya? Enggak, iPad saya mati. <laughs> si hostnya lari ke api yang <laughs> baterai habis. Pusat Oke, okay, udah di. Ya. Di stop streamingnya ya, Pak. Ya, Oke. Okay. Sudah, sudah, sudah. Pusafi, okay, thank you ya. Oke, um, Tam. Iya, yeah, ya, yeah, sorry. Nice, thank you ya. Sudah dibantu. Iya, yeah, sama-sama. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. Yo, bye. Good night. Good night semua. Thank you. Selamat hari Minggu. Selamat hari Minggu. Mm-hmm.
udah ya habis lu tinggal makan habis lu baru tinggal makan habis Black Leon siapa ya? Mantas nggak ada suara nih. 